painting is called Pensive. Okay. And you're using a woman for this reason. Why? Yes. Well, most of my work is work that involves women. Okay. And it is uh, focused on the relationship that black men and women have with the beauty aesthetic. So, um, most black women grow up in a world where they're told they're not beautiful. Not by their family, but by society. So they have support systems in their family and within the culture that reinforces that beauty. So I like to depict that in my work. Their battle and their relationship with the beauty standard. Mm -hmm. And then um, what, and the ways in which they deal with that. So how they work to overcome that. In looking at this picture, what are the more beautiful aspects of this woman that you're trying to pull for, if you would turn to it and show me? Well, there are several um, uh, contour and continuous line drawings that overlay mm -hmm. that shows that she is more than just what you see here. Okay. You know, there are other aspects of her being. And he is a Kakashi man from the uh, uh, Kikongo people in Central West Africa. And this is the woman female version of, of the Songhai mask, of the Kafuibi mask, the Kakashi mask, is the, is, is the woman version. So all of that in and of itself really just represents the many layers of, of black women, whether they're from the continent, whether they're from the Caribbean, whether they're from the United States, wherever you find black women throughout the diaspora, there are many aspects of the black women that, um, that exist. Uh, you seem to uh, concentrate, most of the women I've seen in your work mm -hmm. are African women. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, any particular reason? Well, when I was in my early 20s, I met the poet Sonia Sanchez, and, and I asked her. Uh, I, I knew I could draw and paint, but I had to ask her, where can I find my inspiration? And she told me to just walk outside and walk around my neighborhood, mm -hmm. and you'll find what you need. And most of what I saw was... What, what neighborhood was this? This is West Baltimore. Right. And I have traveled several times to West Africa and studied traditional West African music, culture, drumming, uh, things of that nature. And what I learned is that wherever you find black people, you find some semblance of Africanness. You know, that we're not the same people, but we are one people. So there are some different idiosyncrasies, but there are also cultural strains that tie us together. So, so this, this one is called Houseless, mm -hmm. but it has a strange configuration around the head. What is that about? That is actually the Kafuibe mask. This is the male version of the one that's in the other painting. Um, this, is a, this is from the Songha people. Um, yeah, so I like to overlay the image with the mask, not totally cover the face, because most and many of African American people are unaware of the things that they do and aspects of our culture that are very African. They are unaware of that. So I just do a line overlay. I don't I don't totally block out the face because much of what we do and know is subconscious. Has this anything to do with unmasking men today? That's a happy question. <laughs> and I, we don't have enough time to actually go into um, the gender politics that's associated with that question. But you do notice, I do often use masks that are associated with men, with the men figures, and masks that are associated with women, with the women figures. So I do make that distinction. Okay. Yeah. okay. Now look at this one. Um, this is almost like a self-portrait, isn't it? This is actually a self-portrait. Okay. And it's, it's the work, it's the first self-portrait I've done in 30 years. Okay. Last time I did a self-portrait, it was um, 1992. Mm -hmm. So this this is a self-portrait, and I, I am pleased to know that you, could, you noticed that. <laughs> well, what I also noticed, it seems to be having a mask. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's actually the Koda sculpture. It's okay. actually an uh, African sculpture. Um, some people consider it a mask, but it's part Koda and part me. So it's similar um, subject matter in that there are aspects of Africanness, but then there's some, some new things on top of that and underneath that at the same time. So how would I interpret that if it's not really a mask? So Kwame and Krum had a quote. He said, uh, and I'm going to butcher this quote, so I'm a paraphrase. That's okay. 
You don't have to be born. It's not the African. It's not being born in Africa that matters. It's the African that's born in you. And that is not the exact quote. Okay. But um, I understood Kwame Nkrumah's point. His point is, you're African regardless of where you may have been birthed. Right? If, in fact, you truly understand and are aware, you are aware of those aspects of traditional culture and ways in which that they manifest. The way we name our children, the way we speak, there are no cluster consonants, the way we do away with cluster consonants in the language, the way we season our food, the clothes we wear, you know what I mean? The way we walk, there's certain, definitely aspects of our music and our art. Where it's, it's, it's clear, like really the entire show is called The Continuous Lie because of the continuous aspects of traditional African culture that exists um, that, that, that folks just are not aware of. And it's an intentional, um, they're not aware intentionally because we, we live within a culture that seeks to, to hide those things intentionally, you know. Well, are you helping when you put up these paintings? Are you helping to erase the camouflage that is existing among men today, especially of African descent? Absolutely. Uh, I'm also an educator. 20 okay. years public school, 15 years adjunct uh, professor. And one of my main goals or the main aspects of my, my educational philosophy, because I taught mostly in West Baltimore, 99% of people who define themselves as black uh, uh, school demographic. So part of my educational philosophy is to peel back, either peel back or dig deep inside and reveal um, those aspects of the culture that, that are really um, right in front of us. You know, it's to make the, the young people aware of really who they are and where they come from. Is there any consideration as to what is happening among men of African descent in the city of Baltimore, crime, a big concern. So as an educator, I always go back to show me their educational record. Many of the young men who could be considered lost, pull their school record and I guarantee you, you see they were misdiagnosed for some type of uh, behavior disorder. They probably at some point in time was uh, prescribed some medication at a very young age so that they could act right in class. Uh, and last but not least, in specifically in Baltimore, there's a large number of students that go undiagnosed for lead paint poisoning or lead poisoning. Lead poisoning is in the water and the paint. Uh, they go to school in schools where they can't drink the water. It's for hair washing only. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you can't tell me that's not also. You know. Yeah. Would you be bringing out that in your painting anytime soon? That type of uh, concern. Um, Kind of my mission from this point forward. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's my mission. So we look forward to seeing more of your work. Yes. Thank you. Thank Thanks you very much. Thanks. All right.